Hi, welcome back to SQL Server 2016 Administration. I'm Steve Jones. And this is Section 3, Databases. In this section, we're going to take a look at the system databases and their various purposes. We'll look also, also look at user databases and how we create those. We'll spend some time on the file and file group architecture. We'll look at database options and how we change them. And lastly, we'll look at managing your database space. Hi, welcome back to SQL Server 2016 Administration. This is the video on system databases. In this video, we're going to take a look at the different system databases that are installed with SQL Server, talk about the purposes of each of these, and we'll look at some common administrative tasks for these system databases. There are four system databases installed with SQL Server by default. These are Master, Model, MSDB, and TempDB. Now, each of these serves a specific purpose and is, in fact, important to the operation of SQL Server instance. None of these databases can be deleted, nor can they be renamed, and all must be working for SQL Server to function correctly. Let's look at each of these in detail. The master database is the main repository for all the information about the SQL Server instance. In fact, in order for the SQL Server instance to start, it must be able to find the master database. Therefore, the path to the master database files is passed in as a parameter to SQL Server.exe. If you were to run SQL Server.exe from the command line, you would need to include these parameters in order for the system to start. The paths for all other databases are stored inside master, along with plenty of other metadata for the SQL Server instance. For example, all of your server level objects, such as triggers, users, logins, these are all stored inside of the master database. This is also the default database for new logins when you create them, but we don't want uh, logins to default to master. We want them to use other databases instead, so we should change this. We really only want administrators to be able to access the master database. Now it is a good idea to not create any objects inside of the master database in case of a DR situation where you may have to rebuild master. We don't want to lose any objects in here and typically it becomes complex to restore the master database. So in general you want to use a user database for any other objects. All of our server level principles, security objects, etc. are stored here and there are some restrictions on how the master database functions you can read about those at the link provided in Books Online. MSDB is our administrative database for SQL Server. All sorts of maintenance and system level information is stored here, such as the backup and restore information for all of our databases. All of the SQL Server agent schedules, jobs, results, operators, etc. Our SSIS packages and results are stored here. Log shipping information, policy based management, database mail, data collector information, UCP information, etc. They're all stored and cataloged in the MST database. Now, in general, we'll talk about some of these later on in the course, but MSDB is the place where we go. We find want to find out how the SQL Server is running, what type of maintenance information and work has been run on the SQL Server. The model database is a template. And whenever we create a new user database, the model is used as a template and all of its settings, all of its sizes are copied over to the new user database. So if we want to have different defaults for our new databases where we store user data, we make changes to the model database. In general, we want to be careful about the change we make because these are copied to all user databases. So we don't want these changes to be something that we wouldn't want in every database. Once we've created a user database, certainly we can change things and deviate from the model database, but it's a good idea to have the model database fairly simple with minimal changes. The last system database is TempDB. This is a scratch pad for SQL Server. Whenever it needs to store data, produce work tables or intermediate structures, when you're satisfying queries or running operations, it uses TempDB. Whenever there's some sort of table or some sort of query plan that doesn't fit inside memory, it may spill to TempDB. That means that we will use a TempDB database to create those objects. If we create temporary tables, they will exist in TempDB as well. Because this is a scratch pad and a place where the system actually uses and creates tables and objects as needed, TempDB is actually recreated every time SQL Server starts. Now the default size is the same size as our model database, but we can change that. And it is important that you size TempDB appropriate for your workload. We don't want TempDB to have to grow in order to satisfy a particular workload. We want TempDB to be large enough to meet the needs that we have for the server. We'll see later how we can manage database servers and change the size of files. There's very little maintenance that are needed for our system databases. Now all of these use a simple recovery model, which we'll talk in, about in a later module. We can change this to full recovery if we need to. 
All of our system databases should be regularly backed up so that we have copies in case of a DR situation we may need to restore them. The exception is TempDB. It really should not be included in any maintenance, including backups. Because this database is rebuilt from every time SQL Server restarts, we don't need to perform any maintenance. There are times somebody will recommend rebuilding indexes, for example, in the MSDB database, but in general, this is not a consideration or a cause or an issue that we should worry about. We typically don't have enough data to worry about index uh, rebuilds or index fragmentation in any of these databases.